afternoon, everyone. This is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Uh, I know I've been away the last few days. I actually <laughs> um, did it to myself. I overdid it and uh, suffered from dehydration and that caused other issues, but I'm better now. I've taken the time to relax and rehydrate as much as possible. Pulled out my cranberry juice that I made a while back. Good thing I still had some of that and really loaded down on that, so I'm definitely better. Plus, I visited the pharmacist and uh, they took care of me, so it's all good. I got up bright and early today. I guess I'm making up for it today <laughs> because I did get up bright and early and I baked bread before I went out to the garden, so um, I'm just going to slice it as soon as I finish this video. But. Um, yeah, we were down to the last slice of bread this morning and I thought, well, I'd better make more. I may not feel like it after I go to the garden. I usually don't feel like doing too much after, but today was actually a little bit better. I, I managed to do that, spent made twice as long at the garden as I normally do. I planted my potatoes and I planted those in uh, bushel baskets. I found last year that trying to dig them out of the ground was a little bit strenuous for me. So I thought, well, I have these three bushel baskets and uh, I'll just buy some dirt from the garden centers. Actually, I went to Walmart. And uh, so I bought a, five bags of dirt and I'm gonna fill those up. And uh, hopefully I'll just turn them over and I'll have a lovely bunch of potatoes. I have no idea how well they'll grow in that environment, but this is my first time doing it, so it's an experiment. I do have my tomatoes and my peppers planted. <laughs> and what's really unusual is that I did grow two um, ghost pepper plants, and they are second from the hottest. I think it's the Carolina Reapers are the hottest ones. Um, not for my consumption, let me tell you, but uh, what surprised me was that one of them had 90% of the leaves chewed up. <laughs> what in the world would eat the leaves of a ghost pepper plant? I have no idea. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see if the second one is decimated in the next few days. Perhaps it's not. And, and if it is, I may have to restart a couple more of those plants. But if they, they were just an experiment for me anyway, so not a big deal. Uh, I have a lot of uh, sweet peppers plants planted, maybe about 20 of them, so that should be good. I want to get some rutabaga in the ground, I want to get some spinach in the ground, uh, what else? Um, some basil, I have yet to get basil in the ground. And while I was there I took some cuttings from my um, uh, sage plant and from the um, l lavender plant, so I brought them home and I'm going to root those uh, here doing cuttings they need to be monitored a little closer well yes i then i got home and got cleaned up and uh, decided that i uh, had a little bit of cleanup to do here that uh, has been irritating me and i've done that job uh, took away some empties uh, for a refund uh, i don't throw them away anymore uh, even at 10 cents and 20 cents a bottle or a can get them out, get the money back, and uh, even if I buy a lottery ticket with it, it's all good. So I um, did that today, and then my daughter called me to tell me, well, I had discussed with her not too long ago about uh, how I buy chicken carcasses to make um, chicken stock, because she was telling me her husband is starting to make uh, chicken stock or, or soup stock, and uh, they normally would use a, an old stewing hen. And I said, yeah, that's what I used to do until I found the, uh, the carcasses. Um, you know, the stewing hens cost more and uh, they're not always easy to find either. Anyway, yes, she was very much interested in the uh, chicken carcasses. And she phoned me to let me know today that she went to her, one of her butchers that she goes to and bought the meats that she was going to buy. And then she asked if they had any stewing hens. And your stewing hens are usually your egg layers that are past their prime. And they're not really very good for a roasting or anything like that, but they make awesome soup or stock. 
Um, and that's what we've always used in the past to make stock was stewing hens. And they said no, they didn't have any, but they did, you know, because she said, well, I want to make some soup or some stock. And she says, well, we have some carcasses here. And, oh. And uh, apparently, they just gave them to her for free. They said, here, what, how many do you want? Five pounds, 10 pounds, just take them. We just throw them out. And that's what I think most butchers do is that when they clean the chicken and they cut off the breasts, meat, and the other pieces that they can sell, they just throw the rest of it out. And um, some of them just can't be bothered letting you know that they do have them. Obviously, the Chinese market <laughs> tries to make a little bit of money on them, and they're, they do that successfully, and that's fine. Um, but apparently, uh, my daughter called to let me know that there's this one location that uh, you can get them for free. So I think that if you press them on you may find somebody who's willing to give them to you. Sometimes they just can't be bothered, I don't know. Um, and others are more than willing to be accommodating. So I, I would not give up on trying to find them if you're interested in them. And speaking of, you know, using every last little bit of food, well, on the way home today too, I was listening to the radio, which is something I usually do, try to catch up on local news and one of the things that they were talking about was uh, the food banks and how they are just totally stretched to the limit and beyond that today. How they have seniors now, a lot of seniors going to the food banks and a lot of them are very embarrassed to go to them but they really seem to have no choice in the matter. You know when you're on a fixed income and the prices of food today are just like through the roof. Uh, some of these people just don't have any choice in, any choice in the matter. And believe you me, I may be ashamed or embarrassed, but I would go to the food bank as well. Better that than to not eat. Not only were they finding a lot of seniors were going there, but a lot of working people, people that had jobs that would end up visiting the food bank at the end of the day after work. So I guess in order to make a meal. And, and that is rough and they're trying to get the government to pay a little bit more attention and uh, see if what they can do to assist in um, helping with that situation. Personally, I don't think the government's inclined to do too much of anything. Individual people that you know will hand in um, a can of this or a can of that or a package of this or a package of that that gets sent to the food bank and that's usually collected at grocery stores as well either from individual people uh, offering to assist or um, the, the stores themselves uh, giving up food so I don't know what the government would be inclined to do and if they would be inclined to do anything at all but they have to make the government much more aware of what the situation is and make sure that they recognize that there is there is this issue that that people cannot afford food because it things are just getting terrible terrible and they're trying to say that food prices are starting to come down that is something else i heard on another segment, not on that particular one, but I think I just changed the channel or the next time I got into my car, they were still talking about food and uh, they were saying that food prices were, mm, food inflation was coming down, but the one food that was not coming down but was still going way up was olive oil. And of course they blamed that on climate change. Climate change is the reason why olive oil has gone from, I used to be able to buy olive oil pre-COVID for $5 for a one liter bottle of extra virgin olive oil. Now, I don't know if it was the best quality, probably not. I've been told by people who have visited Italy, they say that the olive oil we get here is mediocre, it's, the, it's not the A grade, 
that the stuff that they have in Italy is just awesome. Fine. What we have here, I used to be able to buy for five dollars on sale. It was probably regularly seven or eight dollars uh, for a one liter bottle. But I could buy it on sale for five dollars just about any time. You know, may, if maybe not one week, but maybe the next week. And now that same one, I'm lucky if I can find that one on sale for fifteen dollars. And they're claiming that the price is going to go up even further. So I don't know what I'm going to do in that respect because olive oil is one of those oils that I use. I cannot use vegetable oil. It upsets my stomach. Um, I can use lard. And that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, but, you know, you, I fry anything in vegetable oil and I'm a mess. My stomach just cannot handle vegetable oil or canola oil or anything like that. It's just very, um, I'm very sensitive to it. But olive oil does not hurt me at all. And lard is the same. I can use, I can eat foods fried in lard. But that's gone up in price too. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. But um, food prices are not getting any better. When it comes to food, I will buy some cheap cuts, but I will also buy some quality foods. I will not always buy the cheapest food going on, but I make a lot of my own foods from scratch, and I don't know if that saves money, or, but it is definitely better eating. It should save money. I think the prepackaged or pre-made foods are very costly in the long run and that they are not really all that good for you anyway. We have to learn to stretch our food budgets. We have to learn to eat more frugally but better quality. And I don't know how these people that are struggling to buy food are going to make it unless they get some help. And I think the government has to wake up and do a little bit more than what they've been doing. Certainly individuals can help here and there, but also maybe these people need to be taught how to help themselves a little bit more. And I think that we do our best to try to do that. Now these grocery stores that do have bins where you can uh, buy a product to add to that bin for the food bank. So I've never been inclined to um, put any food in that, but perhaps from here on in, I may just, you know, buy the odd item, the odd canned food or the odd, odd, you know, maybe things like oatmeal, a package of oatmeal, something that is of substance and it is good quality that uh, somebody can benefit from. I think that I, when I go shopping now, I will try to keep an eye on uh, maybe putting out one or two items in those baskets for people because somebody's got to do something. Um, we, we cannot let the population starve. And no, it's not all on me, but if everyone did one little thing, it would help. So there's no way that I can feed the hungry, but if everyone did one little thing or gave, helped one little person have a meal, that is something. Personally, I think the government either has to get out of our way or just not make it difficult for people to be able to look after themselves because that is also part of the problem is that they get in our way. Uh, I've heard stories of them uh, not wanting people to garden or not wanting people to keep a chicken here or there. Perhaps the government should be encouraging people to keep a couple of chickens. Um, I know that in certain places they just don't allow you to keep them at all. Um, I know my own mother used to always keep chickens until uh, somebody complained and shut her down and made her give them up, um, which is a real shame. But that was not, she was not in a rural area, she was more in a suburb and I still see no reason why they can't uh, encourage that uh, in order for people to be able to help themselves, feed themselves. Now my mother used to always grow a garden too and she'd grow tons of lettuce and she'd feed her chickens all the lettuce that, you know, the outer leaves that uh, nobody wants to eat. So they always had a, a, a very good diet and uh, she, she was always very happy to have them, very happy to have the eggs. And in, 
I think there was a time that they used to encourage what they called victory gardens too. So every little plot, whether they were backyards or front yards, they would encourage to grow gardens rather than grass. And perhaps that is something that should be encouraged again. So we've always had a backyard garden, always had a backyard garden. So um, people have gotten away from that and they've gotten in to the point where they just rely totally on the system to provide food and that is not necessarily a good thing. I'm not saying that anyone could subsist on what they can grow in their own garden. You know, it might uh, give you some fresh salads, some fresh food where you might not be able to get it otherwise. So yes, something has to be done. People have to be encouraged to help themselves a little bit more, plus something has to be done to, to bring the cost of food down to where people can afford it. Something has to be done to help people. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.